There are many pieces to the cancer puzzle. Each patient we see has a unique and distinct puzzle. These pieces of the puzzle include lots of things. They include patient history, family history, whether or not there's a clear understanding of the diagnosis. Here at the Ackerman Cancer Center, a real strength of our practice is our ability and our desire to put all the pieces of your puzzle together. We bring the whole picture together, and for you, this picture will be clear and will be in focus. Our board certified oncologists and our oncology trained support staff, including our physicists, our nurses, our social workers, and our dietitians, are all here to put this puzzle together. We all work towards your cancer treatment plan to put you on the path to wellness. At the Ackerman Cancer Center, we're committed to taking patients from diagnosis to survivorship. We are here to provide high quality, state-of-the-art, focused radiation treatment for our cancer patients. Radiation therapy is the use of ionizing radiation to control the abnormal growth of cells, whether they're malignant or benign. Radiation works against cancer by two methods. Physically, it goes in and attacks the cells directly. Each cell is like a small factory. You have this conveyor belt, which is really the DNA. So the radiation goes in and will actually blow holes in that conveyor belt, making that cell inactive. A second way that it works is chemically. Radiation goes in and interrupts the chemical bonds in water and oxygen. Some patients will come and see me and they only need to have surgery or they need to have surgery and chemotherapy or sometimes they'll need all three, or sometimes radiation therapy alone. How it's sequenced depends on the kind of a malignancy. When we first meet a patient for consultation, a number of things happen. First, the patient and their family meets with one of our oncology certified nurses. The nurse finds out about the patient's past medical history, medications, and the nurse also provides some education about the process of cancer treatment. The patient and their family then meet with one of our physicians. Our role as physicians is to better understand your cancer diagnosis. Generally, we call up right in front of our patients, the other physicians that are involved in the patient's care, and we work to lead a collaborative team of other physicians and ourselves in providing the best care for our patients. When we treat a man with prostate cancer, we want to ensure that we know exactly where the prostate is relative to our machine. So what we do is we put some small little gold seeds in the prostate. We then image the patient with these gold seeds in place, and that way we have a great understanding of the relative position of the prostate to those gold seeds. Then when a patient goes in for treatment, we take a few x-rays in the treatment room to see where those gold seeds are. We then move the patient ever so slightly to position them exactly where they need to be so the prostate's exactly where it needs to be relative to our machine. We're able to position our patients to within half a millimeter. And by doing so, we have a high degree of confidence as to where the prostate is. Because of that high degree of confidence, we could treat a much smaller volume of tissue. This leads to lower doses of radiation to the bladder and lower doses of radiation to the rectum, and hence less side effects, such as urinary irritation and diarrhea. These marker seeds are placed into the prostate by one of our physicians here in the office. It's a very simple outpatient procedure with no anesthesia. A very small, very thin needle is placed into the prostate and the seed is deployed into the prostate and they're left there permanently. They don't cause any long-term problems. They won't set off metal detectors at the airport or anything like that. Simulation is the first step in the complete planning process for the patient's unique radiation treatment that they're going to receive. It's where the initial CAT scan is done so we can have images of the part of the body that's going to be receiving the radiation, where the initial marks are placed on the patient to help for reproducibility on a daily basis. I'm going to bring you into the room where the CAT scan machine is and we will we'll position you on the table and how you're going to be receiving your treatments. Your treatments won't be in this room but we call it a simulation because we're simulating how you receive your radiation treatments. And also there are instruments that we use to help with the patient's positioning whether it's something called a back lock or any other instruments similar to that to help when the patient is on the table uh, to keep them in the exact position for on a day-to-day -day basis. We need you to have a full bladder for the prostate simulation. And the point of that is, is to 
diminish the actual radiation dose that would go to the bladder since it rests right on top of the prostate. We try to get you as comfortable as we can and this is the best time where you speak up because you have to be able to tolerate this position for your treatment. We then put stickers on your skin that are just reference points for our physics department. And we do the CAT scan, which you won't feel anything. It makes a little bit of noise, um, but that's it. And after the CAT scan's over, you will be remaining in that same position and as still as you can, because the images have been sent to our physics department. They're fine tuning where exactly we're going to be treating them on your body. And then we use little nickel sized thin tapes to help preserve those markings. All of that happens during the simulation. Medical physicists is used in radiation therapy to handle and be in control of all of the technical aspects of the treatment of radiation to patients. We're involved with the radiation protection to the staff the patients, the patient's families, anyone that comes into this facility. A medical dosimetrist is a healthcare professional who is trained in the different modalities of radiation treatment planning. Kind of like a special effects artist that in a 3D movie that takes the physician's vision for each patient's treatment plan and brings it to life and makes it a reality. Everything is customized for that patient. There is nothing that's done stock. We design everything specifically for them. We use almost any imaging modality and we have great treatment planning computers that will utilize and fuse all those images together to give us the best idea of what's inside the patient and how we can create a plan to not only protect the patient, but to treat with a therapeutic dose. Each of the treatment plans that are created are extremely complex. So we have backup programs that double check the time for each of the treatments. We oversee the inclusion of that into the patient's plan. We have to have an accurate determination of what is delivered by other means. And that's where the physicist and the equipment that we have at our disposal becomes important. Before your treatment for prostate cancer, we ask that you come to the office with a full bladder. We give you a water bottle that has a designated amount of water that we'd like you to drink. The purpose for a full bladder is that it moves the rectum out of the way, and it also helps us not treat as much as their bladder. When we bring them into the room, we have them lie down on the table, and we position them in whatever was made for them in the sim room, whether it be a mask, a mold. Then we line them up to the lasers and to the marks on their skin, and we exit the room. Even though we're in the other room, we are with you the whole time. We can see the patient through our monitor and we can hear them through an intercom. So if they need us, they just holler out and we are in the room in seconds. Once the treatment started, the machine turns around them, they'll hear buzzing noises. They will not see anything, um, feel anything. The only thing that they will hear is the machine turning around them. Nothing's touching them. They can't feel anything. The main job of the patient is just to lie still and let us do all the work. The patient normally comes for six to eight weeks, five days a week, and the treatments usually take 15 to 20 minutes each day. You have nothing to fear. The nurses here at Ackerman Cancer Center are here to assist you and make sure your experience during treatment is the best possible that it can be. During your treatment, you will meet with a doctor once a week, best to assess the progress of your treatment. You'll also be regularly assessed by your nurse, and that's to make sure that you have everything you need to successfully complete your treatment and to make sure you're comfortable. So it's important if you are experiencing any changes or have questions or concerns that you let a nurse know right away so we can make sure we're effectively managing those concerns. We're here as much as you need. Here at the Ackerman Cancer Center, we have a whole host of support services for our patients. It really is one of the strengths of our practice. I have found that support services are very integral to the delivery of cancer care for our patients. The services that our nurses, social workers, and dietitians provide improves the quality of life for our patients through treatment. An oncology social worker is here to provide cancer patients with psychosocial services and various resources within the community, um, nationally, internationally, for anything that they may find that they need throughout their treatment. I meet with every new patient who comes in and am able to assess and then tailor what needs to be done and what resources each individual needs after meeting with them. Here we navigate our patients from initial consult all the way through treatment, and this allows us to ensure that the burden is taken off of them. This also allows us to help them transition into survivorship once they've completed treatment. 
The services that we provide depends on the nutritional status in patients. The first step is to perform a malnutrition risk screening. If the patient doesn't eat well, he receives recipes, general recommendations, and tips to improve his clinical condition and his quality of life. I am available before, during, and after treatment to help patient and family to cope with radiation therapy and the secondary effects. My role as financial resource coordinator is twofold, basically. That is financially and uh, their insurance, particular plan that they may have. It is very overwhelming because the word copay, the word deductible, the word out of pocket is very confusing and complex to some. So I can reassure them, no matter what, we will work through this with you. We're here to be resourceful and compassionate at the same time. I have the capability of reviewing each and every insurance plan with them. I'm here to assist you, to walk with you, to hold your hand and accommodate you the best way that I can. And you will be taken care of. Patients are concerned about follow-up care. Once treatments are complete, what happens next? We are always here for you. Well, we will schedule follow-up appointments as deemed necessary. We will never lose sight of you or your process of recovery. The Ackerman Cancer Center team understands that your cancer puzzle can shift, sometimes in subtle and other times in significant ways. We will ensure that you are appropriately monitored after your cancer care. 